Welcome back, guys. Welcome back for joining us. People bring profit. Uh, our little podcast. Hey, uh, my name is Chris Alexa, um, the CEO, founder here at Aspire to Be. And I uh, got my man Justin over here to my right. Yes, sir. We're both wearing red right now. We, we even red today. We're redding it up. Yep. <laughs> redding it up. Uh, Justin's our uh, uh, COO here at the office with us. And uh, and my right hand man when it comes to stuff like what don't we, embarrass me because it might go all the way up i know you might not yeah, see the shirt <laughs> that's right it's turning red uh we have those conversations yeah. where he he gets red face sometimes yeah. it's a funny joke and my beautiful wife kimberly alexa oh thank you thank you thank you she we talk about job titles it's like uh, cao and she said what is that i said that's everything yeah that's everything what uh, yeah it's um it's funny that's a mini Hats of many. Yeah. And uh, that's why you, you're, one of your handles is called Mom of Many. Yes. <laughs> Mom of Many. Mom, Mom of, of Many Alexas. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. Yeah, it's yeah. funny that people ask about that. But hey, um, thanks for joining us, um, you two, and, and coming out of your office as we get in here. And um, let's talk, chat a little bit, kind of winding down the year here at the end now. And, uh, you know, a great topic would be to talk about um, is kind of some of, of, our, of our hospitality grand slams, if you want to call it, or, mm. you know, kind of what just happened mm -hmm. this past year yeah was holy it, moly yeah it's been the last couple of years we're like what it can't and somebody keeps saying don't say it can get any worse it can't yeah. get it can't get any worse um yeah it can so um we know that but so i kind of want to just bring that up because there's some stuff out there that people probably will feel the what we feel and, and done what we've done and some that haven't and it's been a hard time for a lot of people. Um, but again, my glass is always half full. Uh, I live way up here with the with the rainbows. Yes. And it's always good to me. So I always try to be aggressive and find things. And I've learned that in business. That um, in business, sometimes it, you just keep going. It's like a bulldozer. You're going to hit some hard stuff sometimes. But what are you going to do? Just give up on the project? Yeah. No, you no. just keep digging. Right. Keep working keep pushing so you know one of the things that i felt like when we, we i'm proud of this company and i'm proud of this who we are at the around this table is because we grew in a recession mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man um everybody was like are y'all growing are you opening stores like yeah we're bulls the bulk of aspire to be arguably is like through COVID, and i you know the, our company has absolutely grown in some of the hardest times that um you know country's ever seen yeah, yeah. you couldn't be more right there and I think that, you know, when people look at us and we talk to, you know, other business owners or, or especially bankers, it's like, how do you do it? And then that, that, that makes them like their ears stand up a little bit more and kind of like, hey, well, what can we do to help you? And that goes off to Kim's like, eh, we're not ready for your help yet, but we might one day. Yeah. So, you know, I think we grew, you know, we, we opened some stores here uh, and we signed some development agreements mm -hmm. and going back and working on some more as we speak. So I think there's a lot of things that we did this past year, I want to just kind of chat about, you know, like what's some stuff that we did that you felt like you, who, who helped us build this bigger this year through this time frame, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, again, I think some of the goes, goes back to me is that we grew, we, we added some stores to our, you know, our system. And one of the things that, you know, we did also too, we remodeled two sports bars mm -hmm. and during a recession. Mm -hmm. And it was tough because, um, you know, costs were up. Yeah, supply chain issues. Yeah. Oh, do you remember that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, Very familiar. We, we couldn't get stuff. <laughs> yeah. Get, couldn't get, you know, furniture. Like, what do you mean you can't get furniture? You're, you know, we, we, we ordered a long time ago. Well, it's another six months to get it. But we just fought through it and figured ways out to get it. And But you said, we did remodels. Two great sports bars that was time for remodels. And at that time, our while we did that is with your team, is you're very, very aggressive with this, Kim. Put us on a budget, things like that. But also, too, we got an incentive yeah. to do those through Buffalo Wild Wings to do these. Through our franchise or, yeah. If you stayed on time and you did them, you got an incentive. So you looked yeah. at the financial side. So, again, you got to look at the benefits of doing things. Yeah, it made sense for our company to do that, even though we were in a time, in a dipping time of we saw, you know, decreased sales a little bit it was we put that on the forefront that we were going to attack that we were going to roll that out because of the incentive we looked at all angles of the cube when we when we started looking at remodels during yeah. this time you know and just like anything else we we took the stance of like when you say we we kept growing we grew smaller units. We were even more responsible than we've ever been. And you can't, maybe you couldn't afford what you used to be able to, but you can not say no. You can get in a room and you can figure it out. And instead of, 
you know, paying a million, you pay 800,000 and you have to back into that. And that's your responsibility to hedge against inflation and supply chain and, and all of that. And we did that across the company. Um, you know, we, yeah. we took the mindset of if, if everybody else is losing eight pennies, how do we get in a room and figure out how to lose four? Yeah. yeah. And, we exactly what we did. and we did. And we did. And we did. We did. And then that that's what, those are the grand slams that we're here, yeah. you know, where we, we want you to ask and we're, we're here to share. Yeah. Yeah. I think with that too, you know, when you go back and look at some of the, you know, the mindset that we we tried to handle through this, and we'll probably have to try to handle through this year too coming up. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they keep talking about um, interest rates going up, and that's that's kind of, you know, you know, when you really study these these things that are coming after us and understand, um, that's going to hurt a lot of growth of people. But luckily, the way we took a stance on it. We were pretty aggressive with our, our finances and, mm-hmm. and, and uh, going out and securing that we still have the funds to just in financing to go ahead and still produce two more, three more stores this year coming up in 2023. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's with a lot of hard work you did. So you, it's, I think your mindset when you go into this and being, when we call them grand slams or nuggets, you got to be forward thinking. Absolutely. You, yes. You have to predict the unpredictable the best you can yeah that's right yeah so did we do anything like that with i think with training too right we tried to go back into the drawing board we, we totally at. did i mean training and development i mean there's awesome systems out there all of our brands have them but we we took a huge stand in, in personal training and development all of us going to conferences us sending some leaders to conferences and and all of those are are big ticket investments but they, they come away and the, the result of all of us up in our game and leveling up through training and development, um, you know, definitely paid dividends. It was a great investment. And we also took the stand of training and development or learning management systems of training those systems better and training the leaders better to, you know, make sure there's accountability system. place and to yes. work the system yes. and not trying to reinvent the wheel, just trying to get back to the basics of let's follow the system. Let's get our training. Let's make sure people are trained before they're actually doing the job that they're in, which helps with retention and making sure people stay with you longer. So training and development was a huge investment that we made this year. It's one that we're going to, I think, double down on yeah. next year yeah. where we're, we're going to keep the momentum there. But we, we spent a significant amount of time making sure that the system that are provided for us that we're paying for we're actually getting the most bang for our buck out of yeah. and um, th- that's been huge oh yeah for sure yeah that's um so you know we go talk about our, our growth you know we, we signed some development deals that was some 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 wins for us mm-hmm. through this another win was you know we did some remodels and um and we, we did some when people are like not doing things, not upgrading their units, not painting their units, not, you know, restriping their units or, you know, parking lots. And, but we did that too, because also too, because you normally see when you do a remodel, you see a 10% bump in sales is what you hope to get at normally. You want to, you want to, but you know, we didn't see that, Mm -hmm. but we stopped the bleeding. Now we we kind of maintain where we were at. Um, now, costs, like you said, losing eight cents instead of four cents or four cents instead of eight cents is the big thing, too. But I think that's where we were at. But what allowed us to do that, too, guys, and this is where uh, y'all are awesome at it. And we're all awesome here at Aspire to Be that what we did is and we tell young entrepreneurs, you, you got to have money to make money. That's right. And, you know, Cash is king. that's right. And you got to mm-hmm. be careful. Just because you're making a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, put a lot of money back. Yeah. Because that's how, you know, people always say this, of, you know, a bull in a bear market is awesome. Mm-hmm. That's when you win. Yeah. But you win when you have the cash. But the bear does not. Yeah. So uh, I think that's what really a win for us, that we were financially strong enough that we did everything we could to, to, to save money, to put it up and not just live off debt. Right. You know, that's a problem. Yeah. And I just want to layer on top of that. You know, we expected, of course, the 10% bump or whatever, and we didn't get that. And then we scaled through and we made, you know, figured out how to do the four cents. But on top of all of that, we did those remodels as a refresh for our staff and our employees and getting them just a refresher. Oh, major morale booster. Yeah, Yeah. it was just a major morale booster. So even though as a company, we may have not have saw those uh, increases in sales, we are benefiting yeah. just from our 
morale within our restaurants. Creating a better place to work yeah. and driving our profits through our people is what we started this podcast yeah. to, to launch. So yeah. it, you're absolutely right. When you come into work and it's a beautiful facility and there's brand new TVs and the technology's awesome and all your equipment's perfect and your bar taps are flowing. I mean, I want to work there. I'm re-energized. I'm re-excited. And if you're the best place to work in town, you're going to have less of a staffing issue. That's yeah. right. That, that's a Grand Slam play right there. And, yes. and I'm glad yeah. you brought that yeah. up because, you know, you, you, when you go in a store and it's, it's you know, restaurants get beat up. Oh, yeah. I mean, they Absolutely. do. They take a beating. And mm-hmm. we're, we're on a remodel schedule of like seven years. Mm-hmm. And um, But, you know, the the win for us, right, is, is the, the thing that we did really win at this is because when you walked into the stores, they were beat up. And his staff was kind of like, eh. you know, it's like sitting on these, you know, bar stools that are kind of wore out and the tables are scratched up and just been eat up with, you know, sanitizer and TVs are, you know, faded out. And guess what? Two years ago, another concept opened down the road and they got the new state of the art stuff. They got better furniture than us. So it's like, okay, now we kind of need to refresh. And that's what a lot of concepts didn't do in the past is kind of refresh and keep them refreshed because it keeps people happy externally, the guests coming in. But you hit on it. Both of y'all hit on these nuggets that was, that was the best. Our staff loved it more yeah. than anything, too. So it's like remodeling your kid or, you know, getting your kids new you know, furniture in their room. They're like, yeah. ah, I love it. You know, especially when they go from, you know, being a five-year-old to, a, I mean, we saw our girl go to a 15-year-old. She didn't want all those colors you put in her first room. She <laughs> yeah. wanted the new colors yeah. to be a teenager. Right. So it, that's important. That's a win for us. But we were aggressive with that. Mm-hmm. Very aggressive. You know, anything else that, you know, I, I, that I'm missing that I think we really want on? You know, I think we're winning in the social media oh. space. Yes. And, the, and that that you, social media doesn't mean you have to go spend a whole bunch of money in digital marketing and ads and, you know, all, all of that. For, for us, it was our testimonial. It was yeah. just literally saying, all right, we're all just going to be on social media, A, we're going to start accounts and we're just going to start, if we're pouring into our people, celebrate pouring into our people. If we're going to have an awesome special, let's let everybody know. If we're going to lead by example, let's take you know snapshots of what those moments are to let everybody know what that small tidbit or expectation might look like. Um, so having an awesome social media strategy, uh, I think was at very, very minimal cost. Uh, and if you look at our company, and look at our social media, uh, you know, ask yourself how, you know, what type of impact are, are we having and how much does that cost? And I think there's there's something to that. And that social media strategy as we grow this thing um, will we'll be even bigger. Yeah. yeah. And for me, like I said today on our herd update with all our business uh, coaches and our leaders, it's it, – Encouraging them to make a post on their LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, allows us as leaders a platform to go in and touch that hourly employee that may be in a restaurant five, six hours down the road. It allows us to go in there and give them a high five on a social media platform that we may have not, we may have missed the moment. Yeah. You know, maybe they're having that great moment within their restaurant mm-hmm. and we totally missed it because. We're utilizing social media to our advantage, yeah. and I encourage that because that's a great way to, especially nowadays, um, with the younger generation, they need instant gratification. So mm-hmm. if the CEO of the company can poke in on someone's social media that works for our business coach, that works for us, and high-five a hourly employee or a back-of-the-house employee, yeah. front-of-the-house employee, that goes so much. That was a definitely a win, I mean, for us, because we saw the value in that during COVID, right? Because people are locked in their houses, you know, everybody's getting everything to go, so we challenged our teams. That's when we kind of shifted that, too. It's like, because we saw a need, we mm-hmm. saw a free platform, yeah, right? And that people can get on there, and, and our managers had fun with it. And then, used to in the past, we would just post on Facebook and just, just our personal kind of stuff. But then we saw how our staff and people really act, reacted to it. And y'all ran with it and they ran with it. Our managers did. They did crazy TikTok videos to promote a pizza of the months and, and yeah. just things. If you're part of a yeah. growing company, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to connect with your people. And having mm-hmm. a good social media strategy and just giving high fives and letting them know that you're there, letting them know that you see them. And especially if you're, you know, geographically not close, uh, you can connect with folks, you know, every day, a couple yeah. times a week that you'd never be able to. And the bigger you get, the harder that connection is going to be. So giving yourself small glimpses of access through social media was part of our strategy. And yeah. and, and not, 
just because it's the right thing to do too. I mean, I think sometimes when you say strategy, it's like a, you're scheming on how to win something. No, it's just, we want to interact with all 900 some odd yeah. folks every single day, no matter what, and just keep pouring into them. So um, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And that, that was a big deal for us this year. Well, you know, we, we did it to get our name or to get when we did it to COVID to get our specials out to do things and we saw how it was taken off. And then I think you said this in our herd call was awesome because our leaders were on there on that herd call. And we we're like, we don't get to see those leaders on a daily day. So sometimes a weeklies yeah. and, and monthly because some of them are real out there. Our stores are spread around a lot. Mm -hmm. And, but when we get to see them post and we get to make a comment and just, Hey, I just, you're doing great. Appreciate you. I think it, that was awesome that you brought that up in that. Cause it's more important than just the, it's it's important that they know that we do see it and that we do appreciate everything they're doing. So that was definitely a win for us, adding the social part of it. And I think one of the other wins that we were allowed to do this year in this tough environment, um, it was on the financial side, is like really taking a dive and paying attention to stuff that we can really control. I know you came into my office like, did you know, has our power bill gone up at the house? I was like, yeah, it has. Like this one's, yeah, it's gone up 20%. Yes. You're like, look at our stores. Utilities have almost, well, they have in a lot of locations doubled. Yeah. And that was something that you came to me and then you ran to operation. Hey, we got a problem. Oh, yeah. And play by play, P&L responsibility, line by line. It couldn't have mattered more this year than than ever. ever. I mean, looking at turn on, turn off schedules, getting yeah. to your thermostats and making sure that they're perfect, get making sure your equipment is maintenanced and you know maintained and cleaned properly. Uh, that that couldn't have been more relevant and important this year because you know gas, electric, water is like it's it's double in and some yeah. markets. It's 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 and it's, it's gonna tough. Get, and I feel like it's just gonna get worse too at this point. So um, that was a win because you, you we we you identified it and when you're when you're going through tough times like this and even when you're going through good times you really need to kind of pay attention to everything that you can control. That was one of the things too. And one of the other wins I think that we really had in our business um, is is us personal development. Oh yeah, is Absolutely. us developing ourselves to be. A, I mean, we live it. It's our culture. It's who we are. Is aspire to be more, and you know the, the, that's how we founded really the your leadership meeting that you wanted us to sit down and meet on a regular basis. That's how we founded really the coffee with the bulls. That's how you really founded the herd update on your Friday calls and getting us together because now you saw the importance of us communicating because things were changing so rapidly. You know, we couldn't wait or people can't, don't have time to sit there and read emails and loot all that to get us in front of each other. I think one of the major plays we did this year was exactly that. It was like calling the plays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the herd update communication in general, we went all in on communication as a leadership team, as stores, man doing manager meetings to every single Friday, putting on a keynote keynote speech and calling the plays and giving them directions and letting them have, you know, the specifics and, and, you know, that, that, that was a huge deal. Communication, um, mattered more than ever because there's uncertainty out there. There's anxiety out there. There's folks not knowing exactly what they're supposed to be doing because they're dealing with, I mean, tell me I'm wrong here. We've dealt with more things this year, like first time things. Oh yeah. Like, oh, we've never dealt with that yeah. before. Oh, oh, that vendor's never done that before. Yeah. So yeah. they're out there dealing with these things for the first time. So if there's one nugget, it's like get on the phone with them every week and they deserve a keynote speech. Yeah. And all of us deserve to get in here and have a coffee and do a leadership meeting every single week to calibrate, to learn. And when you walk away from those meetings, you should feel a little like, all yeah. right, let's, let's go. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to score a touchdown. That's that's how I feel is putting on those meetings. It's how I feel as a, you know, contributing to our meetings. Um, so communication has been a, a real, real big piece. Again, doubling down next year. How do we do it even better? And better. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And um, to sum it up, you know, I feel like one of the huge wins. This is a, this is a, a thought, a dream that we really want to do this podcast. Mm -hmm. and, and share our story and just get out here and you do yeah. it. We do it twofold, right? It's it's sharing our story and, and making us better. Because I think you said something during our podcast. You know, what I really like about the podcast is it's going to make us be more accountable. Oh, and it does. Right? Absolutely. Well, how'd you say that? Remember yeah. you come to me that, okay, you, we got to, if we say it, we better walk it. Yeah. And, and we do. Yeah. But, and, and it makes us walk or even straighter line, I think. Yes, it does. Yeah. It, hel it holds all of us accountable yeah. to, you know, we're saying words through these microphones that are eventually going to get out to hundreds and thousands of people, but we have 
800 people that we're responsible for immediately right yeah. now. And they're going to be watching as well. And so we better be he- held accountable as leaders to whatever we're, whatever words we're spewing through this mic, we better be able to back it up and, and lead with it. And what I love about this is how our dream has come true to do this. Um, it's just a, a vision that I had. And, and y'all took it and ran with it. You critiqued it like crazy. And we just, we put it together. But not only are we trying to make others better, we are just totally getting better at this. Like doing our business, knowing what we're, we're up doing. We're upping our game, yeah. We are up in our game and it's challenging us to do it. Because we, we, like Kim said, we have 800 people that we're responsible for. And those people, if we make one wrong decision, that can affect a lot of people's paychecks, you know. So it's important that we do that. But think it's been a um a great year we can say for us i mean it's been tough but it's still been a good year Mm -hmm. would y'all feel the same uh this is no yeah this is one of the more challenging years ever but like back to the like why we started this podcast things and and holding ourselves accountable uh couldn't be more right i mean we deal with 24 7 calls text emails you know all of what we just talked about is just takes incredible amounts of effort from a a small group of people, but I, I really enjoy getting in here and, you know, getting recalibrated and really putting thought and just being as real as we possibly can. We're not sitting here reading off a script. Yeah. We're sitting here talking about how we're thinking, what we're doing, how we're approaching business, how we're approaching our people, how we interact with each other. And we just want to get better at it. That's right. We just want to get better. And that personal development piece is this is a really awesome platform for us to share some of our successes, some of the things that, uh, you know, we even we need help with and uh, for, for us and the three of us to, to level up. That's yeah. right. Level up. I level up. Yeah. All right. Well, again, um, thank you, guys. Thank you for, you know, pouring your in this season. This the season we taped and, and, and put out there that it was a lot of good for us. It does. And we're going to go back and, you know, challenge ourselves to be better today than we were yesterday and um, and, uh, and have fun and go out and inspire a lot of others to do the same thing, too. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate you. Go subscribe. Go watch us. Um, listen, watch. However, comment on here too and send us messages too and let us know what you would like to hear next season when we pop these out. Thank you guys.